All right, welcome back to Let's Build the Ultimate Theme Park. My name is Tyler Cedarwall, and today we are going to start a really big undertaking that I've been kind of scared about because it's pushing myself outside of my comfort zone when it comes to building quite a bit. But today we are going to be starting the hotel. So a lot's going to be happening in this episode, and we have a lot to talk about, especially some upcoming Planet Coaster news. It's going to be great. But the first thing we did is I took the arcade from the boardwalk and I ended up putting it over on this side of the path. I decided that I wanted to make the boardwalk a bit more extravagant. I just was kind of looking at the boardwalk and I'm like, you know what, this just kind of seems old and rickety. And although I was kind of down for the idea of having like an old styled boardwalk that was like an original part of the park and we can still have that lore for it. Um, I decided I want to make the boardwalk a bit more extravagant. Lots of lights, lots of nice architecture and stuff. Just because this is the ultimate theme park, so I kind of have high standards for things. But I still wanted to keep the arcade because I liked it, so we just moved it. All is good. We will be remodeling the boardwalk soon. But today, as I said, we are going to be building a hotel. Now, first thing I did is I took one of the uh, blueprints from the French Riviera. We're going to be using that as the base for the hotel, just so I can like copy pieces off of it. Because it's kind of annoying sometimes having to go through and like find all of these scenery pieces, all the scenery pieces you need um, in the scenery area. Sometimes it's easier to just copy a building and use those pieces because it's a lot easier to copy than search for everything. And I don't know, it's good to just use as a base. So we're going to be building a hotel, which is supported in this game. So what you got to do when you build a hotel is you have these red rooms which indicate the foyer. This is how the guests enter the hotel technically. And then all of these boxes indicate a separate room the guests can stay on. And the boxes with the gold lining on them, those are luxury rooms, which are a bit more expensive. And when you're playing the game, you're able to set the prices and stuff, which if you're playing in the official campaign mode, where you have money and you have to balance your finances and your budget and everything, you're able to kind of be a little bit more intricate with that. Now the thing about the rooms is you can be like sneaky and you could place them all underground and have the hotel you're making not even take up any space if you have limited room or something. It doesn't really matter where they are as long as they're attached to the same building as the foyer that the guests enter through. But I'm not going to do that because I think it's cooler to have the <laughs> rooms above ground because it makes more sense. Although it won't matter too much in the long run because I'm going to cover them all up and you won't be able to see them anyways, but it's okay. So I'm going to be detailing out a couple different things on this hotel. We're going to make a detailed lobby, we're going to make a restaurant patio on the back, and we're going to have a swimming pool. Now this was a pretty difficult build for me to do because it's a pretty large building first off, and second off I'm not an architect for hotels of any sort. So I was looking up like tons of pictures to use as like reference points for hotels just so I can make sure the hotel look pretty normal. I mean, I've been to a ton of hotels, so I didn't have to look up too many pictures. I mostly was just building, trying to make the most hotel-looking building I possibly could. But I wanted to have balconies for the people to come out of their rooms and stand on. We'll have to use our imaginations a bit, because the guests don't actually come out of the rooms. But we have to pretend sometimes. And I decided to put this hotel in the French Riviera, because I think the French Riviera is a good theme for a hotel, a nice chill theme that kind of makes you seem like you're going on a destination to like the Caribbean or to South America or something, or to the French Riviera. I mean, it's just kind of that look, that beach look, which people like beach hotels. Although I do have plans to put more hotels in this park. Um, I'm thinking about adding one to the jungle adventure theme section of the park when we build that later and then probably also in the downtown New York theme area that we build later on. And that's all gonna be in the future, but I think those will be two other good areas, especially the New York area, because I can just theme the hotel as a regular skyscraper. Don't even have to do much thinking outside the box for that one. And I know I also mentioned my expo slash convention I'm starting next year about 10 episodes ago, I think? Maybe not quite that long ago, but good news. Finally got all that worked out, and I'm about to be signing the contract and closing on that deal. So I'm going to be hosting my own convention later next year in April, so I will be announcing a lot of news related to that in the very near future. I am so excited about it. Um, I'm be, I've been working my ass off planning all this stuff for this, and I've been traveling the country for the past year 
talking to people, making connections to make all of this happen. I've been doing so much work that you guys don't even know about, and I'm excited to finally see it all come together. The hotel I'm using for my convention is super nice. It's gonna be in Chicago. So the lobby is one gigantic open room that goes all the way up to the top of the hotel, and it's a big open room, and then on the perimeter, on the sides of the room, are all of the hotel rooms and there's elevators that go up from the very center of the lobby and there's bridges on every single floor that lead you to the sides of the room where all the other guest rooms are and it just looks really cool and I'm really into the architecture of the hotel which as you guys know I'm really big into architecture so just that element of the hotel gets me super excited along with just the hotel being super nice and helpful and like with the convention idea like they are super excited and like been helping me out with so many things and it's just gonna be good i hope some of you who are watching will be able to attend but if you can't the events that we do during the convention some of them will be live streamed as a show so there's that to look forward to anyways this video wasn't about talking about that but i just felt felt appropriate since both situations involve hotels one of my goals while building this hotel is I'm trying to add as much dimension to it as possible. I'm trying to have like the rooms like pop out, trying to add decorations that add 3D elements to it. Just because, as you guys know, I'm not a huge fan of like the flat buildings. I like stuff protruding from the buildings. But the nice thing I want to talk about is a new update that Planet Coaster announced yesterday that might completely change this game as we know it. I feel like this update is going to make this game rise in popularity tenfold. The update that they announced is that they're going to be allowing people to make custom 3D models and submit them to be scenery that you can use in-game. Which I think we've talked about that on the series before, how awesome it would be if they gave people the opportunity to make scenery for the game. Because there's lots of 3D model creators out there, and if they just allowed people, they could have people make free content for this game. They could have people making content for this game that's free. and. Maybe they watched my videos, because maybe they got the idea from me, but that's what they're doing. So, they're going to start allowing people to submit custom created scenery into the game. And I think that it's just going to be a complete game changer, because first off, that means we're going to be getting a lot of new scenery. And that, like, a lot, a lot. Now I have a couple questions. I'm not sure if the scenery has to be approved by Frontier before it gets added into the game. I'm not sure if it's going to be like that, or if it's going to be just like the Steam Workshop where you can just, anybody can submit blueprints and then download them. I'm not sure if they're being a bit more strict with that. They're probably going to be a bit more strict because they probably don't want people submitting nudity or things that are questionable. And they probably want to make sure that people are only submitting really good scenery, so they want to have some quality control with that. I don't know if, how they're going to add it, like if you have to go to the Steam Workshop and they'll have a separate section where you can browse different options that they have and then download just the pieces you want or if they'll have like a completely new tab like I have no clue how it's going to be done they haven't given us much detail but I look forward to it because if this is done right this could be amazing it's like planet coaster plus Gary's mod pretty much the other exciting aspect about it is we might get more intellectual property added to the game so people could be submitting models from different fictional or non-fictional universes like Marvel Looney Tunes, kind of like how Six Flags has, or different things from like Universal, Disney, the video game companies like Nintendo, like that's why I, that's why I asked the question if they're going to be having like this manual submission process where they review stuff. Because if that's the case, will they be allowing first-party intellectual content to be added to the game, or does it all have to be like obscure scenery that doesn't reference anything that has some sort of copyright on it? I don't know. I have these questions. And we'll just have to see how it is. What are your guys' opinions on this? Are you excited about this new edition? What do you think this could do for the future of this game? Do you think it's going to help it grow a lot? And also, what does this mean for me? Does this mean I have to go through my whole entire park again and add all these new scenery elements that would make it even better that I couldn't add originally because I didn't have them as options? Another question I have is them rolling out this feature. Are they going to continue making their own scenery DLC packs as well? Or does that mean we're not getting any more official scenery packs? Because if that's the case, that would be kind of upsetting. Or are they going to focus less on making scenery and focus on adding more mechanics to the game, like how they added the hotel and like the soda machines and stuff? Because there's still a lot of new interactive elements they could add to the game, like rides or games. 
maybe they want to have more people work on a water park expansion of some sort. I mean, the possibilities are pretty endless with what could be happening. I'm so curious. And hopefully I don't die because, you know, you know what curiosity killed. Oh wait, no, I'm not a cat. I'm not gonna die for my curiosity. Lucky me. And also I got kind of lonely while building because I was by myself, so I made myself a little happy face out of rocks so I'd have a friend to talk to. Don't worry about me. I'm okay. At least the doctors in the insane asylum say I am. <laughs> but yeah, I'll delete it later. But I just thought it was funny. <laughs> These videos always take me like five to six hours at least to record the gameplay, so I do get lonely sometimes. Not gonna lie. So I put this metal scaffolding up by the pool, and I'm gonna put some lights pointing down at the pool, just in case people want to have pool parties, or there could be like a DJ that comes up to the roof, and there'd be like cool light shows and stuff, so people could really be popping. I've never seen that at a hotel outside of Vegas, but our hotel is special because it's a tourist destination inside a theme park, so we're gonna make sure it's extra special. And also at the same time while building, I'm trying to add some greenery because that's the best way to blend your buildings into the land around it is by putting trees and shrubs around it. But yeah, building this pool is making me think I really haven't gone swimming in swimming pools that much this summer. The only times I have has been at like pools at people's houses. It's kind of weird, like when you get older, you don't go to public swimming pools very much. I don't know why that is. I guess also public swimming pools just aren't as fun when you're older because they're usually shallow and you can touch the bottom anyways. I've never really found a decent public swimming pool as an adult. Do you guys have like any fun pools that you go to? Or am I the only one who like feels this way? Also just a heads up, next episode I'm going to be showing you guys how to change your terrain options. I finally figured out how to do it. So we'll be able to change some of our terrain options. I'll be able to give myself sand. Oh, I can't wait. Look forward to that whenever that video comes out. And also temporarily, I'm just putting this like splash effect inside the pool to make it look like there's water inside. But later what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the screens, the movie screens, and I'm going to put one of those inside the pool. And then I'm going to put a video of pool water on that screen so it looks like there's actually pool water in the pool. I gotta think outside of the box a little bit. But overall, I'm really happy with the way this pool is looking. So I'm putting some couches inside this lobby. And I'm going to work more on this lobby later. But while trying to think of some ideas for it and going through some scenery, I realized there isn't very many scenery options for trying to design hotel lobbies. So I'm hoping like, I'm really happy that there's going to be custom scenery because there's lots of just like things I wish existed that I could use to detail my park so much better. And I know that they'll probably all be added once the custom scenery is there because they can only add so much like developer made scenery. So I'm glad that all of those gaps will be filled and we're going to start seeing some realistic builds later on I'm sure. So also as I was building I thought how cool would it be if they added a DLC pack that allows you to have restaurants in the game where they would have like servers bring food out to you so like all you'd have to do is set up tables that are classified as a certain restaurant guests would come sit down and like they would just be animated to look at the menu and then the waiters come take their menus they bring back food the guests eat and then pay or whatever like just like something simple like that I feel like that'd be a really cool addition and you could really like I feel like <laughs> I feel like Planet Coaster just has the potential to be like the best like life simulator in general. Like I guess there is lots of aspects where it's like if you add that, is it technically a theme park simulator anymore? Which I would argue yes, because theme parks are more than just theme parks. They include so many different things. They have restaurants, they have shows, they have concerts. Like there's so many things that happen. I feel like the more things that they add, the more realistic you can really make your theme parks in this game. I don't think it would be stretching too far, but I think it'd be really cool because I'm about to start building this restaurant onto the hotel. I thought it'd be really cool if there was just like people coming to sit at the tables and then waiters come in to like bring them food and stuff. Uh, but not like that might be a bit of a stretch, but uh, maybe eventually. But maybe not even a Planet Coaster because you guys do realize that someday in the future there might be like a 10, 12 year, old, 12 year gap in between Planet Coaster and the next game. But in 10 more years, this game's gonna seem old and gray, and we're gonna have another theme park simulator come out. And it's probably going to make this game look like crap. Because at one point, I thought Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 was like the alpha meta of theme park simulation games. But then you look at this game and compare it to this game, you're like, nope. But then there's Thrillville, and no game can compare to Thrillville. Not even Planet Coaster, no. 
No way in the world. But I think this restaurant's gonna be really nice because you can come eat a meal, look over at the waterfront, watch some of the roller coasters in the distance, look over at Hyrule Castle and be like, how does a theme park make so much money to build stuff like that? And the secret is, it's a video game and none of this costs money. <laughs> and the pool right now kind of looks like a gigantic jacuzzi hot tub. I would be okay with the hot tub the size of the pool. Whenever I went to SGDQ this summer, there was a hot tub that was huge. It could hold, it was like the size of a school bus. I remember making that comparison when I was in it. I'm like, this is the same exact size of a school bus. You can fit so many in that thing. It's just such, so big and long. Okay, don't misconstrue that at all. I think I also might add that this is the first Planet Coaster video being recorded from California. Wait, is it? I might, no it's not, Never mind. I recorded one when I was in California last time a few months ago. Uh, well, first video that I'm recording while living in California. <laughs> and I just think that's cool. I don't know. Just the fact that I've been recording this series from so many different locations. Uh, today, I meditated for my first time because my Airbnb hosts, they are yoga instructors. And they, and they invited me to this meditating session at the Marina Del Rey Park in California, which is right on the beach. And, well, it's kind of more of a harbor because there's lots of boats and stuff. But they invited me because it is National World Peace Week. And on the very last day, they decided they were having a bunch of friends get together to meditate and kind of try to think of ways to help bring more world peace to this world. And so they invited me. I'm like, that sounds awesome. And I went to it and it was a great experience. I can honestly say I liked meditating. It helped me think of a lot of ideas and I try to think of a lot of ways I can potentially help make this world a better place. And it was just, it was a nice thing. It was a nice gesture of them and I'm really happy I got to do that. I think I'll probably start meditating a bit more. Um, just if, if anything, secluding myself from any distractions like my phone or music or anything and just think and just try to think about happy thoughts to try to put myself in a better place mentally. Do any of you guys meditate? If so, I'd like to hear your stories and I'll keep you up to date with my progress in the future. But now we are starting to wrap up this episode. I'm finishing off by putting a little overhang at the front of the hotel where people can like come and, and unload. I guess cars can't come back here, but most hotels have this type of like awning on the front. So I thought I'd add it here too. But I do plan to add more onto this hotel because I need to do some more details on the inside and I'll add some more exterior details later, but I was building for a very long time for this episode. I think it took me like five hours to build this hotel. There's lots of planning and like trial and error. I cut lots of stuff out that you guys don't have to endure, but I am really happy with the way it's looking so far. So if you guys enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button. It really helps me out. It means a lot. And I will see your beautiful faces in the next one. Take it easy, guys.